would it be easier to attempt to send information through uh, before anything else? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the only thing we were interested in. I mean, I'm not interested in, at all in sending people uh, through time. And, why, why not? Well, number one, it, it doesn't serve any purpose, and it's actually, you know, we, we call ourselves the information age. Uh, you know, sending a person back is like, you know, that, that sounds romantic, but sending information back is vastly more important than sending a person back. I mean, sending an, a person back, is that's, as I said, that's fun for us. But being able to send information back, and we were talking about that earlier, is about warning uh, or sending information back about cures and things like that. I mean, this is this is actually much more uh, important. Eventually, uh, it would be nice to send people back, but the amount of energy that would be required for that would require uh, the uh, the total uh, capability and uh, collaboration. I mean, you know, CERN is an international collaboration. Yes. It would Require something like a super CERN type of thing. I mean, would require uh, the output or the uh, financial cooperation of all the major world governments. And once again, that 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 hmm. that answers the well. That's because of the fact of the energies that we're talking about. Yes, you, know, yes. you know, if you're sending information, that's not much energy. If you're talking, mm, about I was just capacity. contemplating the cooperation of all the world's governments. Oh yeah, that's that, that, right that on the chuckle. But, but, but still, all you have to do is think about the CERN. CERN is the cooperation between uh, the United. It's, it's uh, you know Switzerland, Germany, you know France, uh, and the United States. You know, is it, so it, it, it is possible if they feel like they want to do it. Okay, That's professor, just for fun, let us imagine that you get the twisting you want, that you can right. pass information into the past, and that you decide to pass, just as an example, uh, information on how to cure a disease that we now, now know how to cure, thereby saving the lives of millions of people in the past. Right. Now, that one act could have paradox uh, uh, implications that are staggering to even think about. Well, that's the reason why I said that time travel to the past is a much more complicated and subtle thing than time travel to the future. There are no paradoxes with time travel to the future, but when you're talking about time travel to the past, it brings up the specter of what we call the uh, grandfather paradox, which has very, very many forms, but the most basic of it is if you go back to uh, prevent your grandparents from meeting each other, mm -hmm. then they don't have your parents, and if they don't have your parents, then your parents don't have you, so how do you go back and, and change the past? I mean, that, that's, but all of these other things you're talking about have that aspect to it. And you have to realize that, once again, quantum mechanics has led to a possible resolution of this notion of the paradox. You know, quantum, what we've been talking about mainly, except when we were talking about entanglement, has been relativity. Quantum mechanics, there's two pillars of modern physics. One is relativity, the other is quantum mechanics. And when you bring quantum mechanics into the mix, you actually have a whole different uh, thing happening. Uh, and let me clarify that. Back in 1957, there was a physicist at Princeton named Hugh Everett III, and he was looking at what happens if you apply quantum mechanics to the universe as a whole rather than just to simple systems. And when he uh, developed the mathematical theory behind that, he found that it led to a rather startling conclusion, and that is to say that uh, whatever outcome can happen, that outcome and its opposite or adjacent would happen. For example, if I'm talking about, um, and I'll use a simple scale, a large-scale analogy. I'm sorry, so, Professor, before you get into that, we're right up against a break, so hold that thought. We'll come back to it uh, following the break. Grab some coffee. I know in Connecticut it's getting really late. Professor Ronald Mallett is my guest. Time travel is the subject. Midnight in the Desert is the show. I'm Art Bell.